Welcome to the Airgun Show. This week we're taking a look at the Tracer Lead Ray F600 lamping kit. But first, we're out at dusk trying to target some wily crows at the roost. I might have to crows this evening. Now, as I've explained in the past, as a native species, crows do need to be culled a little bit more judicially than introduced grey squirrels, because they do have a role to play in the woodland ecosystem. However, they also have an appetite for their eggs and young of songbirds and game birds, and also the contents of pheasant feeders. So, when numbers start to spiral, they do need to be kept in check. Limiting the number of crows you shoot isn't usually difficult because they can be frustratingly wary birds. They do tend to be a little bit more bold at the roost, but even then you're unlikely to make particularly big bags because you've only got a very narrow window of opportunity. Crows don't usually start flighting in until twilight, so the chances are you're only gonna get a few shots before you run out of light to shoot by. Being very cautious birds, crows usually like to pitch in to the tallest trees when they first come into roost so they've got a really high vantage point to scour the woodland below. So I've picked an area that enables me to cover a stand of very tall ash trees and a few oaks. They're also quite open trees with splayed branches, the hope being that that will give me nice, clear, unobstructed shots when the crows start flighting in. Same as when I'm roost shooting for wood pigeons, I'm not gonna build a hide this evening. Mainly because I like to stay mobile in case I set up in the wrong place to start with. But also the last thing you want is hide netting in your line of sight when you're trying to spot crows up in those treetops in very poor light conditions. Right, although I'm not bothering with a hide, I'm still wearing full camouflage and I've set up next to a really thick tree trunk which is going to give me a good bit of natural cover. Another little trick, because it can be very quiet in the woods at twilight, is to just clear the ground around the base of the tree with the side of my foot just to get rid of any dry leaves and twigs so I'm not crunching around if I need to shuffle around that tree to get clear shots when the birds are coming in. Right, well you'll see I've put on the scope cam this evening, which should make life a bit easier because I've got a feeling Nicky's not always going to know which bird I'm aiming at when they start flighting in in that gloom. Also, these are tall trees and it's quite a long shot, so I'm going to use the trigger sticks just so I've got a nice steady support when I'm shooting through the screen of the scope cam. Should make life a lot easier.
there were a few birds in then, but I just couldn't get a clear shot. There were twigs in the way, and they were bouncing around in that breeze too, so I just had to leave them. Hopefully we'll get a better chance later on. Right, there are birds coming in, but annoyingly, they're just not giving me clear shots yet. Though it's worth just being patient, not taking shots that carry the risk of wounding or spooking the birds before we get a good chance, which will hopefully come before too long. Right, there were a few birds in that time. One of them just about presented me with a clear shot. I managed to thread a pellet through, drop it, and it's got us off the mark. Let's see if we can get some more. couple of pointers when you're shooting through a scope cam. Firstly, it's very easy to cant the gun because the crosshairs always appear upright on the screen. So when you're lined up for the shot, always just have a little look up away from the screen and over the top of the rifle just to ensure that you've got everything dead upright to keep that shot dead on. Also, with such a narrow field of view through the scope, it can be really difficult to pick out your target when you're looking around in the treetops. So what I tend to do, while there's still a reasonable bit of light left, is earmark the tree trunks and then pick out a few distinguishing features on them. So it might be a particularly thick or knobbly branch. Then when a bird comes in and you manage to spot it through your naked eye, pick up that trunk through the scope cam, follow the trunk up to the feature that you've earmarked and then work out how far left, right, or up and down you need to go to find the bird that you need to then pick up in the crosshairs ready for the shot. There are a few birds coming in now, but it's painfully frustrating because they really are reluctant to offer me clear shots. Certainly hope our luck starts to change soon though, because we're starting to run out of light.
Well, we really did run out of light there. I've managed to pick three birds by torchlight, and that wasn't easy, and we've had to come back here to the car to finish up the filming by the light of the headlights. Now, this evening's session really was rescued by the FAC rated gun. The trees were tall, shots were fairly distant and steep, and also because of the breeze, headshots really weren't on to me, but having that extra knockdown power means I've been able to get clean kills with shots to the chest area, those heart and lung shots dropping the crows. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that an FAC rated air gun will give you a much greater killing range, but in all honesty, it doesn't because the targets don't get any bigger. And quite frankly, I seldom shoot at much over 50 meters with it. However, what it does do, and as I've proved this evening, is gives you that greater range of kill areas. And by exploiting that, I've managed to account for a few of these crows tonight. Well, at least we managed to bag a few crows before we ran out of light. Now, it's the Air Gun Show news. This is the Air Gun Show news. Brought to you by the Air Gun Centre. More of the UK Game Fair's visitor attractions have been revealed, with falconry and shoot vehicles in the spotlight this week. One of the most popular falconry teams in the land, CJ's Birds of Prey, will provide falconry demos throughout the three-day event. This won't be your usual country fair display, they promised a hunting-focused demo, and even maybe a simulated hunt. And Great Wall has confirmed its attendance at the show. Its affordable pickups have found favour with gamekeepers since they came to the UK in 2012 and now they can look forward to making use of the 4x4 track already on site. Get the UK Game Fair in your diary now, the 22nd to the 24th of July at Stoneley. Basque membership has climbed to a new peak. It grew by more than 4,000 in 2015, the organisation reports, and now sits at nearly 145,000 members. Basque has also seen a surge in female members, with more than 1,600 women joining up in 2015. That's a rise of a third in four years. There's a chance to win a Brocock Compato in the free-to-enter competition in the February issue of Airgun Shooter magazine. Out now, the eagerly awaited new PCP from the acclaimed British gunmaker boasts a neat semi bullpup styling, two-stage trigger, adjustable power and a slick 10-shot magazine. The latest issue of Airgun Shooter is rammed with airgunning action, including features on cold weather hunting and woodland pest control. There's a roundup of laser rangefinders, a review of the Emerald SWAT scope from PAO, tests of gas ram airguns from Crossman, Stoger, and Webley, a first look at the special BSA Ultra Elite from the Airgun Center, and much more. And there's still time to enter our free competition to win a LED Lenser P7QC lamping kit, as used by Matt Manning in our Lamping Rabbits with a Spring Gun episode. This lamp lets you shift between white, blue, green and red beam without having to use filters. It's also waterproof, has two power levels and casts a 220 lumen beam over 60 meters. The kit includes lamp batteries, stock mounted pressure switch, wrist strap, belt pouch and scope mount. To enter this free competition, head to airgunmagazine.co.uk and click on the competition tab. Entries close on the 31st of January. That with the Egg and Show News. This week we're taking a look at the Tracer Lead Ray F600 Lamping Kit, which I've been using a lot this winter. It costs £129.99 and covers just about any air gun lamping scenario you can think of. The kit includes the lamp, mounts to fit 25 and 30 millimeter scope tubes, battery and charging gear, plus some really handy extras that we'll take a closer look at in a minute. And it all comes in a tough plastic carry case. The most impressive thing about the F600 is its choice of beam colors. Apart from being able to cast a 220 lumen white beam out to over 200 meters, it also enables you to shift between blue, green, and red light simply by twisting the collar behind the torch head. 
Illumination comes from bright coloured LEDs, so there's no need to use light reducing filters. The quality of the beam is optimised by a convex lens. Move the lens in and out by twisting the torch head and you can quickly switch between a tight spot and a very wide flood of light. That versatility means this lamp covers virtually anything from long range lamping to close up jobs like reloading. You turn the power on and off with the positive switch at the tail end of the torch. The grey button in front of that enables you to shift between low, medium and high power settings and also activates the strobe function if you keep it held down. The F600 is also supplied with a remote stock mounted switch which offers all the same functions if you decide to use it. Because each of the F600's coloured LEDs are slightly off centre with the lens, the alignment of the beam does shift very slightly when you switch between colours. But that's no problem at all, because the top section of the scope attachment features a very clever ball joint, which gives you the adjustment to achieve perfect alignment between scope and beam very quickly. Personally, I think all gun lamps should come with adjustable mounts, and this is a really good one. The kit also includes a very useful 2 inch snoot that screws on to shroud the lens. Although it's only a very simple accessory, it makes a huge difference, completely eliminating the light spillage that can really hamper a night's lamping. The F600 is supplied with a rechargeable battery and mains charging gear. On low power, it holds enough juice to run for up to 15 hours. Working at full output, it boasts a continuous runtime of 90 minutes and that amounts to several hours of hunting when you consider how many times you switch the lamp on and off during your average lamping trip. Measuring 164 millimetres and weighing 176 grams, this is a compact little lamp so it won't affect the balance of your air gun too much. But it's also very sturdy and built for proper field use. Housed inside a tough aluminium casing that's stippled for improved grip when using it as a flashlight, the F600 is water resistant and its lens is shatterproof. So, this very comprehensive and surprisingly affordable lamping kit really does have all bases covered. That ingenious colour change system means you can choose the right light to perfectly suit whatever conditions or quarry you're presented with on the night. And that focusable lens means you can quickly shift between a tight spot for long range lamping or a wide flood of light for close up jobs. It really is a fantastic kit that should deliver just about anything that air gun shooters could possibly demand from a lamping setup. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport. Yeah.